Day 121, Honors Physics, Ray Tracing, example number four. Here we have a diverging mirror. Once again, we will work from left to right, but instead of using a candle this time, I'm going to use a Tyrannosaurus Rex as my object. So what we have to assume is that it's, it's, it's reflecting light. There's a light source that's shining on this object and reflecting light to the mirror. And there are going to be three special cases of rays that we'll draw once again out of millions we could pick. But the back side of the mirror is on the right-hand side here. The front side is the reflecting side, which is to our left. This dot over here, it looks like that'll be the center of curvature. So the focal point will be halfway. The virtual focal point in this case is right here. And notice also, if they don't tell you, you have to assume that or write that in. The focal length is negative. So for a diverging mirror, whenever it says that, you've got to make sure that you plug that into the equation which I will remind you of when we get to that in a few minutes here. But once again, as you do ray tracing, tracing to locate the image, I always start with the top of the object. In the case of the candle, it was the flame, which is at the top. And I'm just going to use the top of the T-Rex's T head, which is where his teeny tiny brain is. And I have a ray of light that reflects off that T-Rex's head, comes in parallel to the principal axis. When that reflects, it reflects such that and I remind you once again, you might be wanting to use a straight edge for this to make it come out halfway decent. I'm eyeballing everything as best I can. But that ray reflects such that the reflected ray, if you projected it backwards with a straight line, would come virtually from point F. All right, that's ray number one. That's the one that comes in parallel and reflects out through, quote unquote, the focal point. The second option we have is one that's the opposite of that. It's a ray of light starting from the T-Rex's head going towards F. So that one's going towards F. It cannot go through the mirror, but if it did, it would hit F. But it doesn't go through the mirror. It reflects backwards parallel to the principal axis. So that's ray number two. Ray number three because everything's so tight here, I'll draw it in blue. It's optional. You do not need to draw ray number three. But the third ray that we typically draw for locating images is the one that goes towards C. Let me hold off on that one for just a second. Let me just show you what's happening with numbers one and two. But I'll draw ray number three here in a minute. But the two rays that you see here on the left, one and two that I have numbered, are diverging on the left-hand side. It was kind of like example number two with the concave mirrors when you had reflected rays diverging. To find out where those two rays intersect, and there's a lot of lines here you got to be careful of, I'm going to use black instead of red right now. I'm going to project those two rays backwards. So number two, which is parallel to the principal axis, I'm going backwards with this. If I keep going backwards, that's infinitely parallel to the principal axis. And then ray number one, which is already kind of there as red going through the focal point, but I'll over I'll draw over it with black, all right? So that coincides with the already dashed red line that I have there. Those two black dashed lines, which are the backwards projections of rays numbers one and two, they intersect in this spot right here. I'll put a dot there. And that's the location of the image, the head of the image. With the candle, it was the flame for the T-Rex, it's its head, all right? I'm not gonna redraw the T-Rex, because it's hard to draw him. Uh, but basically, for any object, I'm going to make believe it's the candle again, it'll just be a candle that's up here where the black dot will be the, the flame. The, the images are always situated with their base on the principal axis. What happens with diverging mirrors, by the way, you always end up with a virtual image, always behind the mirror, kind of like a flat mirror or the concave mirror, the converging mirror, in example two, if the object is close to the mirror within the focal point, the focal length, you get a virtual image. So those are the three times you get virtual images. Flat mirrors, always a virtual image. These diverging mirrors, always a uh, virtual image. And for the concave mirrors, always a virtual, only, only a virtual image if you're inside the focal length of that mirror. But I did want to show you ray number three here in blue. If I draw another ray that comes from the same spot on the T-Rex's head, it's between those first two as it heads towards the mirror. 
it's if you keep going with it, it would go all the way towards C. I'll do this one in blue. But it will pass through that same image point that I have highlighted. And I'm cheating a little bit because I'm having a tough time drawing a straight line. But that blue line should go all the way straight through C. If you're using a ruler, it's a little easier. But the light doesn't go through the mirror. It bounces off. That, that ray would have come back to the left this way. So ray number three is, one, once again, one of the chief tools we have of ray tracing to find images. You do not need to draw all three of those rays. Just two of those three will suffice in any test or homework that I give you. But they all intersect in one spot if it's a perfect world. Uh, when you're actually doing this with rulers, sometimes it doesn't come out perfect either. And You'll see this in the labs. They won't give you perfect results, but you'll get close. Anyway, that locates the image here. You can see the image is virtual. But let's do that because it's upright. It'll be an upright image because the top of the image is above the principal axis, just like the T-Rex's head is above the principal axis. And that little black thing I have drawn for you right there should be a miniature T-Rex. These mirrors always demagnify. They make things small. So that should be a teeny tiny T-Rex standing there, uh, quote unquote, behind the mirror. But let's do the math of this once again. The math is always 1 over F equals 1 over P plus 1 over Q. So in this case, it's very important that you plug in the negative 20 for F. That's 1 over negative 20 equals 1 over P, which was, oh, one thing I forgot to mention here, very important thing. The object was 2 meters away. And this, thing, this diagram is not to scale. Uh, 2 meters is 200 centimeters, so that it, what's important here is the 200 centimeters. Should have mentioned that earlier. But, so the T-Rex is way, way, way off to the left there, so not to scale. But you have the idea here. In fact, every diagram you do for these diverging mirrors always looks like this. No matter how far away the object is to the left, 200 centimeters, 300 centimeters, the diagram essentially always looks like this. You always end up with a small, upright, virtual image that's between the back side of the mirror and the focal point. You'll see a few more of those when you do them for homework. But bottom line is you have to make sure you're in the same units. 20 centimeter, negative 20 centimeters for the focal length and 200 centimeters for the object location plus 1 over Q. And you do the math here. You plug it all in. And you end up with negative 18 centimeters. Once again, even if you don't have the diagram, that value right there that I'm circling gives you all the clues or most of the clues for the answers. I don't like what they have up here. This should say A, B, and C. It doesn't really matter. But there's three characteristics of the image that we want to describe every time we do a problem like this. A, whether it's real or virtual. Well, based on the calculations, we know it's virtual because of the negative 18. That's virtual. Based on the diagram, we see that it's because the image is formed by light rays that only virtually intersect. They're not actually intersecting back there behind the mirror. And the image would be upright. B, we calculated the, the image location. That's Q equals negative 18 centimeters. We did the calculation on that. And C, the magnification is the opposite of Q, so it'll be negative, negative 18, divided by P, which is 200. Once again, making sure we're both in centimeters there. If you do the math there, 18 divided by 200, and that is 0.09. The magnification is 0 0.09, about almost 10% of what it was originally. It's really small. This mirror always makes things look small. We'll do some more examples of that in class.